Yo, what'd you guys think of that intro? Come on, you gotta be honest. That was pretty slick, right? Come on, pretty slick. Well, today's video is sponsored by Motion Array. We're gonna talk about them in a little bit, but I'm gonna show you in this video how you can take a template from Motion Array and we're gonna bring it into DaVinci Resolve. We're gonna edit it. We're gonna throw in our footage and our text and we're gonna make an awesome intro just like the one that you just saw. Now, I know some of you guys may not have Motion Array and that's okay. You probably still wanna watch this video because you might get some ideas on how you can create your own awesome intro. All right, so here's the Motion Array website. Links in the description below, you can go check that out. But this is where you can come to get all kinds of great stuff. You got templates, presets, motion graphics, plugins, all kinds of stuff. So in order to find your DaVinci Resolve templates for the cool logo intros, you wanna come on up to templates at the top here, and then you wanna come over to DaVinci Resolve. And now you can just scroll through here and you're gonna see all kinds of different cool stuff. But if you wanted to look for just intros, you're gonna to wanna to click on the intro square right over here, which is gonna filter it by just intros. So the one that I picked out is this one, Modern Glitch Promo. So in order to download it, make sure you're logged in, and then you're just gonna go ahead and hit the download button here, and it's gonna download it in your downloads folder. Now, one thing to know is that these templates don't come with the music. The music is available on the Motion Array website, but it's not automatically included when you download those folders. So what you need to do is when you pick your template, look at the screen here and look down at the bottom right below the download button. It says music not included. And then it says rock and it's highlighted with a link. Click the link and that's gonna bring you to the music. So click on there. It's gonna bring me right over to the music that's used in that intro. So that's super helpful because you want the intro to look just like you see it on here. When you play through the templates on here, you're gonna hear the music and you can get all the music right here on Motion Array. So that's sweet. So once I get to my music one, you wanna download that as well. So jumping into Finder here, you go ahead and grab the folder out of your downloads and put it wherever you want on your hard drive. So for me, I got my project here, footage and modern glitch promo. You're gonna get a folder that looks like this. Inside that folder, we've got a few things going on. You've got dynamic glitch promo .dra. That's what we're gonna bring into Resolve. Fonts, this is gonna tell you any fonts that you might need for the intro or the template to look exactly like it did on the Motion Array, Array website. So if I click on there, you can see it tells me which one I need. So I've already got that. But if you don't have it, you can go get it. And from what I've found so far, the fonts are free. You just go ahead and go and download it. You have a help folder here. Now this generally has a video in it that's gonna show you kind of how to use the template. And a lot of times these are pretty helpful. They were helpful to me, but at sometimes they're also a little confusing too. So that's why I'm making this video. But check out the videos in the help folder. They usually do help you out a little bit. And there's also some notes in here sometimes in a little PDF. You can take a look at those and that might help you out as well. You do have a folder with instructions. And if I open this guy up, this is what the instructions look like. I did watch these uh, in the past and honestly, I didn't find them all that helpful. Um, I thought the video in the help folder was more helpful than these uh, links right here, but nonetheless, they're there. You can check them out if you need them. The other thing you need to do is take your music and I like to put it in the same folder here so I know where it is. So this is the song that we downloaded that said it went with this particular uh, intro. So I put it in the same folder and you see that this particular song came with a, a long, middle and short length song. So we got those in there, but that's what we're gonna be using for the music. So the first things first, let's load this guy up in DaVinci Resolve and then we're gonna wanna take our media and bring it into the project. Getting your media together that's a whole separate thing you got to find whatever clips and and uh, media you might want to use could be photos could be videos could be motion graphics whatever it is you want to use in this case we're going to be using some video clips but make sure you've got your stuff rounded up and uh, ready to go to bring into the project so when you first open resolve I get the project manager here and I'm in a folder where I want to put this template so in order to load it up all you have to do is come into your project manager you want to right click and then we wanna restore project archive. Go ahead and click on that. Now you wanna to navigate to wherever you put that folder that we first downloaded, right? Because what we wanna do is find this, the dynamic glitch.dra file. So the file we just talked about, that's what we want to load up. So once you find it, go ahead and click on it and then hit open. DaVinci Resolve is gonna load up that project for you and then we're gonna be able to start editing it. So once it's loaded into Resolve, you're gonna see it appear in your projects here. And this is the one that we did. We did dynamic glitch promo. Now you can leave it as it is. You can come and right click on it and rename it. I'm just gonna rename this guy. I'm gonna hit okay. So now it's gonna get renamed. So that way I can have it called whatever I want. Then you're just gonna select it and go ahead and hit open. So now that Resolve's open, let's take a look at this template. And just so we're all looking at the same thing, I'm gonna come up to workspace and I am going to come down to reset UI layout. So I'm in the edit page right here. I always do all my work in the edit page. We want to open up the media pool. So open that guy up. And in here we have our bins, master, and we see we've got a drop down. Now in the master, we've got three different folders here. We have edit, 
render and assets. So let's just open these guys up, take a quick look. So under edit, we have different things in there that we can edit. We have logos and each one of these folders has timelines in it. And that's kind of how these things are built. They're all built as separate timelines. And then those timelines are put together to create the overall intro. So for example, we've got two logos here. You can edit your text. There's 12 different uh, pieces of text that you can edit. Next, it says edit images. Now in this case, you can use either images or videos. It doesn't matter which one. They'll both come up and look pretty cool in the, in the video here. So I'm gonna use uh, videos, but if you have images, you can use images too. And would work the same way with any of the slideshow templates. You can use either images or you can use videos. It's up to you guys, you can do either way. So the next option we have here is render. Go ahead and open that up. And inside of render, we have the final renderer. So in there, there's two different timelines and we're gonna see which one is the one that we're gonna wanna use once we get going here. The third folder here is assets. This is the different assets that help make up the template. Most of the time you don't have to do anything with these unless you wanna make some modifications, but uh, most of the time you can just leave it. So you've got footage. This is all the different uh, little effects that they have in the template here that, that you'll see in the video. You've got media and generally they have placeholders in here that uh, you know hold the spot for things that you're gonna put in there. And then in here it looks like all compounds, there's compound clips and stuff. Now we shouldn't have to do anything with any of those. You should be able to just leave them as it is. So you can just kind of close up that assets folder and not worry about it. So the first thing we need to do is actually bring in some of our footage. So in order to do that, I'm gonna make a new bin. So I'm gonna come over here to master. I'm gonna right click and then I'm gonna add new bin. And I'm just gonna call this my footage. So now go navigate to wherever your footage is and then drag and drop it into our bin. So I've got a whole bunch of cool race car footage and that's what we're gonna be using to make this cool intro. All right, so let's get started working with these guys. What do you need to know to start working with them? Well, one thing I like to do is keep the final render timeline open. So that way I can work in the smaller timelines and then see how it's looking in the overall video or the overall intro. So I have the final renderer open in the timeline, but let's just say if I, had, I didn't have any open here, it just says select timeline. You can hit your little drop down here and go to final renderer, or you can just come to your render bin inside final render and it's right here. I can just double click it and it's gonna open it in the timeline. So one thing you need to do sometimes with some of these templates is clear your render cache. So it doesn't seem like you have to do that on all of them, but some of them you do. So playback, delete render cache, all. And then just go ahead and hit delete. That's gonna kind of clean out anything that's in there and we're good to go to start with our own stuff. So the first thing that I like to do is work in the timelines where I have to put my footage in. So this way we can start to build it out and see what it looks like. To do that, I'm gonna come on up to my edit bin, click on edit images. And these are, if I just change the way the list looks here, you have edit image one through 12. So this is the order that they would appear in the intro. So what I like to do is just go through and double click all of them to open them all up at once. That way they're there in tabs and um, you know it's just easier to work with, I think. Now, if you're not seeing your tabs down here in your timeline, you can always come to your timeline view options and make sure this first one here is clicked on that way you're gonna see all the tabs across the top there. And you can cycle through them. There's little arrows here on the ends. You can cycle through to get to the ones you wanna see. So I'm gonna start with edit image one. Now, sometimes you're gonna see a placeholder in here and the placeholder is something that you can delete. You don't need to leave that in there. And other times it's just gonna be blank like this. So now what I'm gonna do is come to my footage and I'm just gonna look at my clips and I'm just gonna start to build out a little sequence here. I'm gonna put one clip per timeline where it says edit image one, that's a timeline. I'm gonna put one clip in there. The next one, I'm gonna put one clip. So one clip in all these guys, or I mean, you could put multiple clips, but you don't need to go crazy. You can use, use one clip if you want. So I know I wanna start out with this guy here. So I'm gonna set my in point, play through the video a little bit, out point, drag it down into my timeline. So there we go, first clip in, we're good to go. Next one, I know I wanna use this clip right here. I'm gonna set my in points and out points. That looks pretty good. Now one tip, it's gonna vary on how long these clips need to be. For some of the templates here, the clips can be really short. They don't have to be that long because it's flipping through stuff really quick. In other ones, you need the clip to be a little bit longer. It just depends on the particular template that you're using. So we already got two clips in here. Now, how do I see what it looks like? Because right now I just have one timeline, you know, that I'm working on and I'm dumping in one clip. So what, 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 am, I, what am I looking at here, right? Well, this is where you wanna come back to your final renderer and you wanna play through it. And that's where you should be able to start to see your, your intro come together. So you can see there's our first clip, there's our second clip. And you can see everything else is happening automatically. It's all part of the template, the text that's there, the little glitches that are happening. Now there's no audio yet because we're gonna have to add that in in a little bit, but our clips are all getting put together. It's part of the template. So when we look at this final render, it's our final product essentially. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cruise through the rest of my timelines along the top here, my edit image three, four, five, six, all the way through the end. And I'm gonna pop in my clips that I want to make the little sequence that I want. 
So I'm gonna do that real quick. You guys should go try it with your clips if you have any. And in about uh, half a second, I'll be done here and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, so I went through all these timelines. I put in my clips and now we're gonna take a look at the final render and see how that looks. So let's click on here. Now, if it plays back a little glitchy sometimes, you might need to play through it once for it to kind of render up. You can also come back up to your playback settings, timeline proxy mode and change that. Um, if you need to, I like to put the render cache on the smart so you can do that too. And you can give it a second to render up. But anyway, here's what the intro is looking like so far. So one of the things that you notice is that we don't have any sound yet. So we're going to put in some sound and we need to edit this text here. And I also noticed there's something that I might want to take out, which is that logo in the beginning. It's not my logo. Maybe I want to dump my logo in there. So we're going to change out the logo as well. All right. So next step, let's uh, start working on some of our text. So in order to find our text, what we need to do is come back into our media pool, into our edit bin, and we have edit texts. Go ahead and click on that. I'm just going to change my view here to the list view. And now you can see we have edit text one through 12, which corresponds to the one through 12 where we put in our video clip. So if I come back to my timeline here, I'm just going to hit the little X on all of these video clip timelines so I can just close them up because I don't need them anymore at the moment. And I'm just going to go through my edit text and just open all these guys up. So now we have all of our text timelines open. Now, here's a pretty cool little tip for you. Since we go back and forth a lot between, you know, the timeline that we're editing in and the final one, because we want to see what it looks like, right? You can have two timelines up on your screen at a time. So here's what I do when you have this view right here. If you come on over to the right, You've got this little square with a plus. Click on that and that's gonna open up two timelines. So in this top timeline, I'm gonna go back a little bit here. I'm gonna close this final render timeline because I wanna open that in the timeline on the bottom. So I'm gonna come over here, gonna select this and you notice that eh, it doesn't appear there, where is it? So as long as I click down into this area down here for this timeline, I'm gonna come back to final renderer and open my final render timeline. Just double click it and it's gonna open it up in your bottom timeline. So I like to keep this here because it just makes it easy for me to jump back and forth between the two timelines to see what I'm doing and how I'm editing this template. So let's get into adding some text. I'm going to go all the way back to edit text one, and this is going to say glitch. Now, if I just click down in my final render timeline, I'm going to move ahead. So it's going to say glitch when it's on top of uh, this guy. So we're going to come up with some text. I don't know. What do we want to say in here? Just clicking back up on the text up here will bring me back into that timeline. I'm going to open up my inspector to edit the text and we can add in whatever we want. I'm going to say the need and that's it. That's all I'm going to do on that one. Now I'm going to come to my text two, and I'm going to select my text and I'm going to come up here and say for speed. Now let's see, how is this looking, right? We don't know, we wanna know. So click down in your final render timeline and you could leave your final render timeline up here with all the rest of them and just flip back and forth. Whatever works best for you guys, I just find this way is pretty quick and, uh, and convenient. So let's play it, see what, what it's looking like. All right, I think it's looking good so far. It was a little glitchy because it's rendering. You get the idea. Now I'm gonna go through the rest of my text tabs up here and add in text. So I'm gonna speed through that. We'll be done in half a second here and you're gonna see what it's looking like so far. Now, real quick, since I'm editing another one here, what if it's a little too big like that? You can always change the size of your text. You can edit any of these options that you have here in the inspector. So this one's a little big. I'm gonna scale that down a little bit and there you go, you're good to go. Likewise, if you wanted to replace any of your fonts, you could do that, change it and make it whatever you want. Okay, so I got through all my text. I added it in there, just kind of made up some stuff that I thought looked cool. Now I'm gonna come down to my bottom timeline and I'm gonna let it render up for a second here. We're gonna play through and let's see what it's looking like so far. Okay, so not too bad, right? So one thing I do want to do is I want to get rid of that logo that's in the front here. So right there, I don't want that in there. So how do we do that? Well, in our bins over here, we do have edit logos. So let's open that up and see what's in there. I'm going to double click on it. That actually opened it in the same section down here as my render timeline, because that's what was selected. So we've got a logo in there now. It's just a static image. Let's say uh, I want to get rid of that. So I could just click this, delete it, and there'd be no logo. Or I could add in my own logo. So, uh... Maybe I'll just go ahead and add in my own logo. All right, so I'm just gonna grab my logo, drop it in there, and I'm just gonna make it the same size as the one that's already there. And if you need a little more room, you can always adjust your windows or whatever. So I would drop my logo in there, and I'm just gonna turn off that track so you can't see the other logo. I'm gonna make it a little smaller by selecting it, coming to my inspector, zooming it down a little bit. There we go. 
Now let's check the other edit logo too. I don't know what's in there. Let's see. Okay, so this is the other logo, the Motion Array logo that's at the end of the video. I'm gonna leave that in there since this video is sponsored by Motion Array. Speaking of Motion Array, Motion Array is awesome. I've been using their service for a while now and actually I've had an account for years but they are awesome. There is so much good stuff on there. There's even freebies. So if you want to try and download some freebies, sign up for an account. There is a ton of great stuff, everything from templates to graphics, to videos, to photos, to music, to sound effects. I mean, the list goes on and on. Just take a look at their website here. There is so much they have to offer. You've got all kinds of templates, presets, motion graphics, plugins, royalty-free music, sound effects, videos, photos. Not only can you get stuff for DaVinci Resolve, but under templates here, look, you've got After Effects, Premiere Pro, Motion Graphics, Adobe, Premiere, Rush, DaVinci Resolve, of course, and Final Cut Pro. You've got all kinds of different presets and macros for After Effects Resolve, sound effects, royalty-free music, all kinds of photos, footage, motion graphics, pretty much everything you need to create create awesome videos, whether it's just for fun, for a client, for YouTube, whatever it might be. Having these assets makes it so much easier to create awesome videos. So if you want to check out Motion Array, link in the description below, head on over, sign up, try it out. Even if you go with the free account, try that out first, see how it does. You can't go wrong. They have a ton of great stuff. And I really, I mean, honestly, I think you guys would enjoy their service and enjoy using their products. Now let's jump back into our intro here and finish this guy up so we can have an awesome intro for a video. So coming back to my final render timeline, ah, there's my logo in there. All right, that works out pretty good. So now we wanna add in some audio. Now, sometimes you're gonna find that there is an actually an audio timeline right over here under edit. And in this case, I don't see that. That's fine, not a big deal but sometimes you will see an audio timeline. So I'm gonna go ahead and close my top timeline there because I just want my final renderer timeline open. Close these logo guys. So now all I have to do is add in that song that goes along with this template. So inside of my folder here, like I talked about earlier, we put our music. Now I don't know if I need the long, middle or short, so I'm just gonna take them all and I'm gonna drag them into my footage bin over here in DaVinci Resolve. Now I'm just gonna take, uh, let's start with, uh, I'm gonna try the short one actually, and drop that down into my timeline here. Zoom out a little bit. Now you can see it's a little bit longer than my clip, but let's uh, let's give this a, a listen and see how it sounds. Let me get my headphones. All right, headphones on, suited up. Let's see what we got. All right, so that's pretty cool. Now, one thing you did notice, or at least I noticed, is that the music started a little early, so we need to adjust that a little bit. So if we play through, let's just listen in here. So it started right when the logo popped in. Now, if you watch the template on their website, it actually starts a little bit later. So what I wanna do is come and just go ahead, right when it comes to this part, that's where I want the music to start. So, so I can see my waveform. I'm gonna click on my timeline view options, make my audio track a little bit bigger. Come down here, drag this up a little bit. So I can see it comes in, it hits right there. I'm gonna move this guy over a little bit. A little quick tip, you can use the period and comma key to move it frame by frame. Select your clip, period and comma to move it frame by frame. Nice little tip there for you. I use that all the time. So let's see how that sounds. Perfect, now we see that that beat is lined up with our, our image on the screen. Let's play through it now and see, uh, see if it looks a little bit better here. And one thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna open my mixer and just check my levels because I think it's uh, hopefully not blowing your ears off. So what I'm gonna do is actually just right click on here real quick, come down and normalize audio levels just to do this real quick, hit normalize. And now we should be getting better levels. So let's uh, just watch our meter, listen through and see what it looks like. Okay, now you do notice that the audio clip is longer than our uh, our intro here. And I'm sure that all these other ones, they'll be even longer. Yeah, a little longer there. And the long one is really long. Now, sometimes it's great because you can have a little extra after the video clip's done so that you can transition into whatever the next part of your video is. And so I kind of like having a little extra there, but let's say maybe you didn't want that. All you gotta do is find a good spot where the beat is going and you wanna cut our audio clip and then we could just scooch it in a little bit. So that's the basics of setting up this template here. What I usually do is I'll set this up and then I'll export out this intro. So I just have one clip I can go dump into my regular project that I'm making for my YouTube video. So to do that, you can just come on over to the Deliver tab. You can set up your settings. 
I like to use custom settings. I've got a few presets here. Got a 1081. Pick where you want it to go. I'm going to hit browse and give it a name. Hit save. And then you can set up your settings however you want. Go ahead and add it to the render queue. Then hit render all and you'll render out the video. You'll have one clip that you can just bring into any project and you can have an awesome intro. It makes it super easy to work with once you did the hard part of putting together the whole intro. So that's it in a nutshell, it's super easy. Now, a couple tips here. Uh, one thing that I, I've done before and I like to do is, I don't know if you saw this video recently, but I love me some drop shadow on some of my text sometimes. I think it just helps it pop. And in this situation, I think it can also help this text pop. So if you're working through some of these templates and you have questions, drop a comment down below. And I'm more than happy to go download a particular template you might be working on, take a look at it, and help you out if you kind of get stuck. But once you do a few of them, you'll get the hang of it. And really, it's not that bad. It's pretty easy, and it really helps level up the intros for your videos. So that wraps it up for this one, guys. Thank you so much to Motion Array for sponsoring this video, for having an awesome service. Really appreciate you guys, Motion Array. And uh, with that said, guys, if you like this video, you learned just a little something. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up for me. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And... I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Oh, if you guys make an intro, drop a link down below. I'd love to go check it out. All right, guys, we'll see you in the next one. Peace.